What's happening here today? Oh, well, today we're having a, like a fundraiser fair, sort of, and we're doing fundraisers. We did them in school, and they were really fun, and it's for a good cause. Um, in Louisiana, in New Orleans, they have lead in the soil, yeah. and it's affecting most of the kids. Hurricane Katrina happens and Mel is in New Orleans along with a number of artists looking at what they can do in the city to respond to the magnitude of Hurricane Katrina. What do you really need to, at that time to transform the city of New Orleans that had 30 to 50 percent of the inner city childhood population poisoned with lead before Katrina? What do you do? You need money. And then you realize there's no funds allocated for the relief of that and they already know it exists. So the idea was to make money. Here. It's gonna be sent to the Congress and it's gonna be asked to turn into real money to help get like um, solutions. If you're gonna have hundreds, then you need a bank fall. This house on North Villery Street in St. Rock looks a little out of place. The safe house, as creator Mel Chin calls it, is home to hundreds of hundreds, drawings of hundred dollar bills by students from New Orleans and around the country. The plan is to put them all in this armored car and drop them off in Washington. First day I met Mel, he said, would you be interested in participating with us with this lead problem with the safe. I said, yeah, I would love to. And all the kids said, oh, they're gonna have a safe. They're gonna have money in it, they're gonna have, no, they're not gonna have money. You all gonna make money and put it on the wall. And so the safe house was important to almost a, a surrealist kind of thing about a very real concern about cash being drawn by kids and adults that was more valuable than real currency. Then you have to show you care enough to go from Mississippi to Texas to Idaho or Wyoming, 20,000 miles, and pick up some of this cash. And you needed an uh, armored truck. It's always about the money that it would take for Congress to create an act that could alleviate lead from our society. Tell me all about these costumes and how they came about. They just represent the hundred dollar bill, our own creations. Some of us are poisoned by the grounds we play on, the houses we live in, and the air we breathe. What's up with that? Mel's idea for the project very early on was that it would be viral. Everyone in my whole neighborhood drew one. And in a sense it was in that you know, we had conversations with educators, and they took it upon themselves to share it with their networks of educators. Teachers were reporting their accounting to us on a monthly basis. We were tracking the fundraisers. The houses we live in, and the air we breathe. What's up with that? Everyone in my whole neighborhood drew one. It's only one per person, so we need lots of people to participate. So after the 2012 near elimination of funding for lead prevention for the CDC. We all retreated to Mel's studio in rural North Carolina and spent a few days really reflecting on the processes and, and lessons learned. We started to see greater potential to connect uh, people not just to lead issues in New Orleans, but to connect to their own lead issues. And that then informed the next several years of the Funder Project, where it was true that the project was still committed to dealing with lead in New Orleans, but that the opportunity for engaging the Funder Project was a way to talk about lead issues in your own community, wherever you are. And then in 2015, the Flint water crisis happens. See if the camera picks this up. See that? Yellow. Again, shifting the way the project worked and what it could do. Our role had changed, and as a project that engages collaborators of all kinds, we really saw the value of partnering with the lead poisoning prevention community, and that's advocates, that's health departments, that's people working on a very local, um, state, and national level. Those are real people behind those funders, real children, real stories, real lives, and people need to see that. 
you have to respect that every funder that was drawn needed to be represented in a proper way. So it takes a team of individuals and organizations. The team has been expanding to really dynamic people who have so many connections with the community and continue Fundred's work in the eradication of lead poisoning on a national scale. We really tried to think about how to bring in some larger partners and to really bring the Fundred project you know, some national scope and some presence in D.C. When Colab was introduced to Mel's work and really seeing how he was using artistry as a tool for social justice in agency and really capitalizing on storytelling, there was no way we could not be involved with the Fundred project. After the evolution of the project, we saw the power of the people's expression having value in this fight against being poisoned by lead. We felt the, the more provocative initiative would be to be at the place itself in D.C. in order to leverage the Fundred's voice to actually show their value to the people they represent. So it's easy to say, but much harder to do. The Fundred Project is a perfect intersection between art and activism, social justice, social change, personal activations, and group and community building. It's an amazing opportunity to connect people that are affected by lead poisoning and affecting lead policy. Fundred has given me a voice, um, given me a platform to actually join into the fight. So everybody was spun into their own action, and everybody was essential. There's a long history. There's a lot of positive accomplishments for the project. They've been all over the country by that point. Uh, but there was really just an honest willingness to want to be, do better. What does it look like to really deliver the fundraise to D.C. in a variety of creative ways? Going to a hill visit, you know, with a briefcase full of creative cash in your hand, it just, it adds a different element to it. And the Fund Nerd is a way to cross all party lines and try to bring some common sense and decency into this. We've been coming here for the past uh, three and a half years since we knew just how bad our water is. And we've been asking for help, asking for money, asking for resources. If we don't have clean water to live, people can get sick. For a concentrated effort around these other cities. So it won't just be Flint. One of our most impactful moments was in 2017. And House Minority Leader at the time, Nancy Pelosi, personally came to see the Fundreds uh, and speak to our attendees. For you to use the arts as a way to raise the awareness of it and attract attention is so important. We owe these children so much more, and you're leading the way uh, to help us recognize that. So I thank you for that. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I have been following the Funder Project for a few years. You know, Mel and I have always talked about the possibility of collaborating at some point. So this project actually looks at race and environmental justice like very clearly with the work that Mel's been doing over the last 11 years. And we're just happy to have it here in our space. It's impactful seeing the young men who created the original Fundreds over a decade ago take ownership of the project, carry their stories and the stories of other young people, and present that to elected officials like Rashida Tlaib, who's on the forefront of justice. Okay, I'm sure he'll be familiar, but he may not. And you got the red lab map. Yes. That's all we need. I don't need to. We became aware of, of a bill that has been in, in committee, the Lead Safe Housing for Kids Act. So we lent our support of the Fundred Project behind this act because it's, it's one more thing that can be done that actually can make impact uh, across the country. My grandson Wayne and Byron Lewis Jr., they had a wonderful time. And I'm glad they did, and I'm glad I was able to bring them out here to experience this. Yeah, so talk about it. It's, not, it's hard for all of us, you know. Right. 
you could talk about any troubles your family had. We met with dozens of representatives offices for residents from Flint, New Orleans, Cincinnati, Omaha, Queens, right. and right. we were invited to meet with uh, now House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Uh, we visited her ceremonial congressional office and uh, she met with residents of New Orleans and Flint. It made me feel so good when she came over and she shook my hand and she said such a wonderful word. It's so, uh, what you're talking about is so important. It shouldn't even be a, a, a question. Welcome to the Capitol, everyone. Thank <laughs> you. It's all about a process. This is one more step that we need to make. It's one more step that may lead to the alleviation of the goal. That's all it's about. It's not done, is how I feel. It's not done till the blood is clean of children being born in these places. That's when it's done.